Hey guys and welcome to another Top Table Wargaming tutorial video. Um, in this video we are going to be making a Hobbit hole. Um, it's going to be part of the terrain which I'm building um, as you all probably know for my tournament in July, the Scouring of Cheshire. Um, the techniques that I'm going to use to make this Hobbit hole, um, it's a bit of a funny one this because there's many many different techniques that you can use. Um, I've looked into uh, several and I am going to try good few of these different techniques because I need more than one hobbit hole obviously to create a uh, hobbiton um, but for the sake of this video I've chosen the technique which I think is the easiest to pick up and the easiest to execute so any of you guys who uh, really want to have a go at getting a hobbit hole and building your hobbit holes and getting them on your gaming tables and you're not overly confident or experienced um, in building terrain this video and technique will be perfect for you I may do another video um, with a more, how can we say, um, experience level, um, modelling level um, build, but just for this one, I'm going to keep it really simple and take you through the steps. So before we start, what I'd like to say is, because I get a lot of messages um, about the bases that I've been using on my terrain, the MDF bases, which is like this one. Um, where I get them, how I do them, etc. Um, I'm at that stage now where I'm building so much terrain I don't have the time um, or the storage space to get a load of MDF sheets in um, and cut them and bevel the edges and smooth them off so I just buy them in now, I kind of cheat um, and a great place that I um, always use and I've been using pretty much every time you've seen one of these on a video um, it's come from a company called Errant Dukes. That's E W R A N T, one word, and then Dukes, D U K E S. They have a Facebook page. Um, I'll put a link in the description below. But if you require any of these, very, very reasonable um, and just make life very, very easy. Um, he'll do them to your specification whether you want them square, whether you want them rounded, what kind of bevel edge you want, um, the thickness of the base. And you'll post them out to you. And like I said, a very, very reasonable price. Um, and I will be going into more different things that I'm doing uh, using the products from Errant Dukes in upcoming videos. But yeah, so check, check that out. Uh, drop him a message. If you do order something from them, um, if you can just mention that you uh, got their details from Top Table Wargaming, that'd be fantastic. Um, but yeah, go check them out. Really, really cool. And just make life very, very easy. So, on to this build. We're going to use a base, obviously, and we're going to use a very, very simple piece of 50mm extruded foam. I've cut it slightly smaller, and if you can see, just going to central, slightly smaller uh, than the base. I've got about 10 15mm all the way around on the base. Um, and what we're going to do, um, we're going to mark this up first off on two opposing edges. Um, so if I can just find my pen, there we go. We all know the rough shape of Hobbit holes. This is going to be a really bog standard um, shape. There's going to be nothing fiddly about it. Um, we're going to get straight in there. We know that they're a hill shape. So we're just going to I don't know if you can see that on the camera, this pen's not the best. I'll see if I've got a better pen, just bear with me. Try the barrel, actually, that's better. And this is not like gospel, this marker, this is just to give you a rough um, visual aid as to what you're going to be cutting away. So we do one side, and then we do the opposite side in a similar shape, yeah, like so. What I'm then going to do, I'm now going to go away off camera and I'm going to carve away basically these two corners till I'm left with that hill shape um, and then we'll come back and show you what to do from there. Okay guys, so as you can see I've carved it into the uh, you can call it a half moon shape if you will on both sides yeah so now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same on these 
and we're going to obviously keep it like so and what this is going to create it's going to, it's going to create a roundish mound hill shape if you like um, which we'll end up with you don't have to be spot on you don't have to stick to the lines because these ho these hobbit holes can look exactly however you want them to look they're not perfect they're made out of soil within them are different rooms and compartments etc they're not going to be perfectly um, sp sphere like if you like um, so yeah so you can kind of go with it where you want I'm going to take these edges off now and um, we'll come back once I've done that okay guys so once you've done your cuts and got the basic shape that you need as you can see I've got my shape here um, you need to sand it down I sand it using these sponge sand blocks I got them off eBay I think got 25 for like seven quid um, nice and soft they're not too harsh you get different courses coarseness um, levels on them and um, when you sand in the tip is sand in circles you've seen Karate Kid you'll know exactly what I'm talking about um, if you sand it in straight lines you tend to sort of sand in a groove so if you sand in nice circles you get a nicer finish you don't have to be perfect because this is all going to be covered and flopped you'll get little things like this I don't know if you can see that little indentations don't worry about it it'll be fine uh, so we've got our basic shape of the Hobbit hole um, what we're now going to do, we need to decide which side the door is going to go on. Now I don't know if you can notice, I've left a, um, a steeper slope on the back edge and a more uh, subtle slope on this side because my front door is going to go here. So I'm going to cut a piece out like so. Um, that's going to be perfectly uh, straight and plumb, straight down to the base. And then we're going to work on uh, attaching the details for the door, etc. So I'll go away and do that cut, and you can have a have a look at exactly what I've done, how I've done it. Um, again, you can copy this like for like if you wish, or you can sort of bring in your own ideas and and just just use my uh, tutorial as a bit of a guide as to how to achieve the different um, finishes, etc. So I'm going to go and cut the front door entrance, and we'll come back in a second. So here we go guys, as you can see I've just cut the opening uh, and sanded it down. This is where the front door, a couple of little windows are going to go. Um, it's going to be like a timber clad effect. Um, so we will now get our balsa wood out and we'll show you um, what to do and how to do it. Okay guys, so the next stage, all we've done, we've took some uh, plastic guard, these pieces that you can see. Um, we offered them up to the uh, opening which we've cut we just marked it with a pen and cut them with scissors really easy to cut so we've got three pieces which are going to be the um, the main entrance to the hobbit hole um, what we'll now do we can get rid of the hole and the base um, and we're just going to work on these so what you will need for the next stage is your three pieces of card that you've cut you can get rid of these and you will need balsa wood and possibly some of the very fine uh, wooden rod, square rod. Um, so if you get yourself some of those and um, we'll get cracking. Okay guys, so as you can see I've been uh, putting the detail on my front entrance, cut my balsa wood into strips or using the, um, where is it? the timber rod, whichever you prefer. Um, Balsa wood is a lot easier to use and I've just been putting like a, a mock Tudor design on with the door uh, cut a round shape for the door cut the outer shape for the door frame I'll probably put a green stuff uh, doorknob on the door and yeah just, just putting strips on um, on the returns and that's how that's going to go on the other Hobbit houses I'll probably have windows I'm going to leave that for this just want to try and keep it simple I've got a couple of pieces of um, the cladding just to stick on which I'm going to go away and do and then we're going to attach it to the uh, hobbit hole itself as you can see I've got a spare um, hobbit around just to check sizes etc so things look like they're in scale which is always a good idea just just to keep in mind um, so we'll go away we'll put that onto the hobbit hole itself 
and then we'll come back and uh, move on to the next stage. Okay guys, so we're going to bring the base back into play here now. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to attach the foam uh, hobbit hole itself to the base. Um, to do that we're going to use a hot glue gun. You don't have to use a hot glue gun if you don't have one, don't worry. I use it just because it's easier, it's quite quick for the video. Um, it, if you are going to use another type of glue, use a PVA or something like that, that um, won't break down the foam. Um, if you use like super glue and things, they just end up melting the foam, it's no good. So use something that is going to uh, stick the foam to the board, but is not going to deteriorate the foam. So, we'll just get some glue on here, like so. There we go. Get the hobbit hole itself, position it. Give it a nice press down. There we go. And now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you if I can. I'm gonna use something. Is that big enough? Use that bottle. Just so that I can show you what I'm doing. We're now gonna place the details on. Yeah? So again, we take the hot glue gun, nice lot of glue on there, we don't, we don't want to be shy, we want to make sure it sticks. And we're going to put that in place and press it on, like so. And the same with the sides. Get rid of these strings, don't worry too much if you are using a hot glue gun about these stringy bits, you can pull them off at the end. There we go. And the final one. Like so. So as you can see, we've got our entrance way. We're now going to make sure that's all set and dry, which with the hot glue is going to be fairly quick. And we're going to move on to the next stage, so I'll see you in a second. Okay guys, so the next stage um, is we're going to put a, a base colour on the, um, the, the piece. Um, and obviously it's going to be green because it's going to be covered in uh, grass like a flock. So we're going to get a green paint, get a little mix going and start painting it on. Now, before any of you jump on the uh, comments, and start screaming why you're not PVA in the foam. The reason is, and this is, this is something that I've only just recently started doing, it is, a, it is a bit of a test. So some of you guys who are more experienced might be able to tell me whether this is a good, good practice or not, but I've started doing it, I've not had any problems with it so far. I will be pva in, uh, applying PVA to the foam to stick the static, static grass with. Whereas normally I'd use PVA to PVA the foam before painting and then paint over the PVA. I kind of thought, well, the PVA is going on anyway, um, so I can put the paint on. PVA is, if you didn't know, you put on as a protective uh, barrier um, to protect your foam from paint and other things. Um, I thought, well, I'm going to be PVA it to attach the, the static grass, so if I get the paint on first and then PVA it, is that any different? Um, at the moment, I've not had any different results or any problems through doing that, so like I say, if you, if you know better and there is a reason why I shouldn't be doing it, put it in the comments. Um, we're all learning new uh, tips and tricks um, on all these videos and through working with each other etc. So yeah, it'd be interesting to hear. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to get a nice coat of green all over the model. You don't need to see me doing that all over the model. Probably take a couple of coats, so I'll get the first coat on, let that dry, whack a second coat on and then we'll come back. Okay, see you in a sec. Okay guys, so as you can see, I've got a couple of coats of green on. I've started to put some coats of paint on the uh, doorway. I've still got a little bit of work to do on there. So I'm gonna go away and do that. It, the paint's taking quite a long while to dry. It's quite cool in here today. Um, so I'm gonna do the next coats and then I'll come back after tea time and we'll get onto the next stage. So I will see you shortly. Okay guys, uh, the next step is going to be flocking. I'm going to use one of these, which is basically um, a sieve with, that runs an electric charge. You put all your, your um, static grass, sorry not flock, static grass in here. Uh, you press the button, it creates a, a static charge, 
which makes the static grass stand up on end. Um, you don't have to use one of these, I just have it, so I may as well use it. You can use a normal sieve, uh, you can do it by hand, it's a lot more difficult and I find you get a lot of waste. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna get all that set up, I'm gonna get my PVA ready and we'll come back in a second. Okay now guys, uh, just to confirm, we have uh, most of them are all covered in PVA. It could take more than one pop to do this, but you know, um, here we go. I've never done it on this scale before, so we'll get some static grass in there. Press the button, get a charge going through, and we just tap. And we make sure it goes all over where the PVA is. So we'll get some more in there. And what you'll find is you'll still get excess um, that you can collect up at the end and rebag or reuse what you want to do. You're just going to get as much coverage as you can with the static grass. Like so. And what I'll do is, because it's quite difficult doing this around the camera stand, I'm just going to finish it off and um, off camera and we'll come back in a second. Okay guys, after the first layer of flock, like I said, I'll probably put another couple of layers on and patches of darker greens etc just to mix it up a little bit. But you should be ending up at the minute with something looking vaguely like this. Um, the things that I'm going to add to this as well as another layer of flock here and there is a couple of decorations like trees. I'm going to now tidy up the, the paintwork. It's only been uh, base coated and washed, so I'm going to highlight that, highlight the door, highlight the wood, etc. Um, probably add a little path, something like that, some other details. So what I'll do is I'll go away, do all those little bits, and come back, have a look, and have a chat about it. So I'll see you in a sec. Hey guys, this is where we're at after um, a few details have been added. Uh, let's get rid of the Hobbit. Put the uh, footpath in, a couple of bushes, bit of detail with a barrel and a little flower in and around the uh, door entrance. We've got a tree here, chimney pot with some moss and plants growing out of it. You can see the camera's not picking up great, but there is different shades of grass on there. There's browns in there, a um, bit of um, reindeer moss, uh, lichen on the top to act as a bush. I think that's what all I'm going to do on that one. I'm going to do another two. Um, very basic ones, similar. As you can see, I've still got to do um, static grass around the rest of the base, um, which I'll do towards the end when I'm finishing. My next project, after doing another two or three of these, I think I'll do two of these, and I'm going to have a pop at uh, Bag End, um, or my version of um, Bag End. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm not going to do a, um, a tutorial for back end because pretty much I'll pr be running through everything I've already run through on this video. But I will show up on the Facebook page um, and on the GBHL group pictures um, once it's done. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you do have a go um, at your own Hobbit hole, please, please, please let me have a look at what you come up with. Like I say, there are different techniques. I may or may not, depending on time, do a quick run through of um, all the Hobbit holes when they're finished with all the different techniques because I'm going to try a uh, a number of different techniques for creating Hobbit holes. Um, this was just one of the easiest ones. There are more complex ones which you get slightly better results from. Um, so, so I may do a video explaining that. Um, but like I say, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Show me uh, your efforts at doing Hobbit Holes or Bag End, etc. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Keep on gaming, guys. Take care.